Hello everyone and welcome to day three of the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz tournament. Uh, this is still the Rapid section, the third day of it, and it's Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces against Maxime Vachiel Lagrave. Uh, the last time two of them played was in Zagreb, we covered the, that game uh, in July in the Croatian Grand Chess Tour, uh, where Carlsen won a very nice game against uh, MVL's Grunfeld defense. So here, uh, if you haven't seen that game, I will put a link to it, it will be the first link in the description below, so do check it out if you enjoy the Grunfeld defense. Uh, and here uh, we might also have the Grunfeld defense, but uh, you know we won't know until we check it out. So a uh, tough second day for Magnus, losing two games, uh, really a tough break. Uh, let's see what happens in this game. Uh, so again, with the white pieces, Carlsen opens with d4, and we have knight to f6. Maxim obviously prepares something else. Uh, we have c4, uh, g6, knight to c3, and d5. The Grunfeld is on the board, uh, and we have knight to f3 by Carlsen. The same line he played in Zagreb against Maxim. We have bishop to g7, and here queen b3, uh, the Russian variation. Carlsen goes for this. In Zagreb, he played c captures on b5, and as we already mentioned, won a very nice game against Maxim. Uh, so queen to b3, now putting pressure on the d5 pawn, and d captures on c4. Uh, we have queen captures on c4 uh, and Maxime castles. We have e4 by Carlsen uh, and now knight to c6. Uh, somewhat rarer move, a6 is the main line here. And here, uh, although bishop to e2 is preferred, uh, not preferred, but uh, mostly played, Carlsen goes for a much rarer line, which is h3. And here is where Maxime really started thinking what's to play. I think he spent a few minutes here. Uh, and continue knight to d7. Again, going for the main line in this position, uh, remembering his preparation. The knight is now coming to b6, where it will kick away the queen, and you want to play f5 at some point. Uh, we have bishop to e3 by Carlsen, knight to b6, and now queen back to c5. And here, uh, you could try f5. Of course, you would uh, very much enjoy opening up the f file for your rook, and the bishop can come into the game, but here white would close it. And after e6, you would have this position where white is somewhat better, controlling more space, and black has uh, some difficulties uh, with the development of the light square bishop. Uh, but uh, nothing uh, too, too terrible, uh, uh, it would seem. So after queen c5, we have a5 by Maxime, with ideas of maybe going knight to b4 to c2, and there are... Uh, some games here where a3 was played to, to prevent the uh, you know jump of the knight to b3. There was a bishop to b5 in one game. Rook to d1 is a known move, uh, but the move Carlsen plays rook to c1 is a new move, and it is now as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. Uh, knight back to d7, uh, again challenging Carlsen's queen, and here uh, you could go queen c4 and you could get a repetition here, but of course there's really no point in doing this if you're already playing white. So Carlsen goes to a3. Seems like a weird uh, square to put the queen. You also could have gone to g5, uh, but Carlsen prefers a3. Uh, we have e5 by black and now d5. Carlsen grabs more space in the center. Uh, we have knight to d4 uh, and now comes knight to b5. A, a, a triple challenge to the knight on d4. Uh, and now c5. So now you can see that uh, after all this has been done, uh, the knight and queen will now nicely control the d6 square. And well, the queen is now very nice on this diagonal because Carlsen here goes d captures on c6 uh, en passant. Uh, we have knight captures on c6 and now just bishop to e2. Carlsen also would like to castle. Uh, knight back to f6, now challenging the e4 pawn and first rook to d1, just uh, attacking the queen. Bishop to d7, developing while defending, and now bishop to c5. Uh, we have rook to e8, uh, or don't we? Uh, as, uh, well, there's no real good way to save the rook, because if you try something like rook to e8 here, knight to d6 just wins it. Because now, if you move it, uh, for example, if you go to e6, then knight g5 will grab it. Uh, if you try something like rook e7 or rook to f8, then you just grab the b7 pawn, uh, and your rook will be under attack by the bishop, and also the knight from here will be attacking the queen, so there's no way to save the rook here. Here, knight captures an e4 by Maxim. Uh, he grabs the pawn and gives up the exchange. Uh, we have bishop captures on f8, Magnus of course grabs the exchange, bishop captures, and now queen to e3, attacking the knight, uh, and uh, now... Uh, uh, MVL doesn't like f5, uh, as it might uh, open up his king a bit, a bit too much, but perhaps it, it was a good idea. He still has the bishop pair, so it's hard to say if uh, Carlsen could take advantage of this. But first he goes knight to c5, uh, and now Carlsen castles. And here we have queen to f6, uh, just uh, getting the queen out of that d-file, as this rook on d1 is very annoying. 
Uh, and now comes knight to c7. The knight from b5 is now coming to d5 uh, to attack the queen and uh, uh, well fr from there depending on what black plays it will be a very annoying knight. With knight to c7 uh, now attacking the rook, rook to d8 uh, preparing to move the bishop so the rook can challenge um, Carlsen's rook on d1. With knight to d5 attacking the queen and now queen to g7 and here knight to b6. Carlsen is up material so he wouldn't mind uh, trading some pieces. Uh, with e4 by MVL and now knight to d4. With bishop to e8 now the rook uh, also controls the d-file and now Carlsen goes, goes for some trades. With knight captures on c6, rook captures on d1, uh, rook captures on d1 and now bishop captures on c6. Uh, now the e4 pawn is nicely defended uh, but bishop to c4. Carlsen doesn't care that his b2 pawn is under attack. He plays bishop to c4 and he offers it, but grabbing it would be maybe a bit too risky already. Uh, black is down material, so you could, uh, you know, get, uh, uh, you know, inclined to grab material as you are down material. Uh, but here after queen f4, attacking the f7 square, the queen has to return uh, to defend it. And now rook to d8 would be just uh, very annoying for black. And here black doesn't really uh, have any good moves for example you could try knight e6 attack the queen and the rook but after this trade uh white can just start attacking uh, the, the pawns here and black is pretty much helpless you will constantly have to keep an eye uh, on the bishop here and once uh, white is happy grabbing as many pawns as possible you can even just trade everything here and just uh, win, win a better end game so after bishop to c4 uh, with queen to e5 uh, not allowing queen to f4, and now comes queen to d4. Carlsen says, I'm of material, let's trade queens. Uh, of course, the queen trade is not favorable for MVL, so he declines with queen to g5, and now comes knight to d5. Here, Carlsen is, uh, you know, eager to get some windmill action with the knight to f6 check, and there's no way around this. You have to capture the knight. Bishop captures on d5 is played, bishop captures, and now knight to d3. d4 pawn is lost either way, so uh, here... Uh, 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 MVL wants to grab the b2 pawn. With queen captures on e4, knight captures on b2 attacking Carlsen's rook and here uh, Carlsen played rook to b1 but there is a better move uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to find this better move as uh, you know you have to spot a un an undefended piece uh, to, to solve this one while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent spotter of undefended pieces such as the knight on b2. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, bishop captures on f7 check. That's the point because now after king captures, you will play queen captures on b7 with check, now connecting with the knight on b2, so you grab a second pawn. And after bishop e7 or moving the king, you just pick it up and now you are up a pawn, up the exchange and of course completely winning. So after knight captures on b2, rook to b1 was played, Carlsen didn't spot uh, bishop captures on f7 immediately. Uh, uh, and here uh, Maxim played queen to f6, but there was no good way to take advantage of Carlsen just missing uh, this. Now que uh, queen to f6 defends the knight and also guards the, uh, the f7 square, uh, but it doesn't matter. Here Carlsen uh, just repeated bishop captures on f7, uh, and it was in this position on move 34 that Maxim Vacher Lagrave resigned the game. He resigned because, well, if king captures, then the idea is the same, just queen captures on b7 check, you pick up the knight here, uh, but it's uh, not, not much different if queen captures. If queen captures, just rook captures knight. Uh, and now, okay, the, the both players have four pawns, but it's still, Carlsen is up uh, the exchange, and even though you have a dark square bishop, which is a nice piece, uh, there's no uh, there's no point in playing this because, for example, white is threatening to capture on b7 as the queen also attacks the pawn. Bishop b4, you could defend uh, the b7 pawn, but then just rook c2. Uh, rook c8 is coming, and after queen d7 blocking, now comes queen c4 check, king g7, and now you just trade queens. There's no way around this. Black's, uh, king, Black's uh, king's position is just too, too open. You will very easily trade queens and just to win a superior endgame rook against the bishop, equal amount of pawns, completely winning for white. So yeah, uh, after bishop captures on f7, uh, Carlsen uh, won a game after after a very tough uh, second day, and uh, I think he broke uh, Maxim's three. Maxim, Maxim was on uh, four wins in a row, and now he suffered yet another loss in the Grunfeld. 
which is always interesting as he is well alongside Peter Svidler, uh, one, of, uh, one of the best players of the Grunfeld defense. And for those of you who enjoy the Grunfeld, you are also welcome to check out Carlsen versus uh, Maxim Varshel Grav in Zagreb Grandchester if you've missed that game. It will be the first link in the description below. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, it. Uh, I would like to thank David Graham and Simon Johansson for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon uh, continuing the coverage of this very nice event, continuing the Capablanca saga and as usual checking up on your suggestions. Thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.